Jay and today I'm here with my May 2018 wrap up. I have a total of 18 books that I read this month. I'm going to be splitting it up into two parts because we all know that your girl loves to ramble so it's going to be like a 50 minute video if we don't split it. So without further ado let us get started. <sighs> the first book that I read this month was Saint Anything by Sarah Dessen and I gave this a four out of five stars on Goodreads. It follows Sydney who feels that she is living in her brother's shadow. Peyton was arrested a while back due to a drunk driving incident where he actually hit and injured a young boy. So now more than ever Sydney feels that she is invisible to her mother and that's when she meets the Chapman family who own a local pizzeria and she finally feels that she is seen for the first time in a very long time. I actually have a love-hate relationship with Sarah Dessen. Some of her books I adore and then other books I hate completely. Completely. This was one that I really liked. I liked how Sarah Dessen tried to delve into deeper topics, although I do feel that some of these topics could have been explored more. I think she did a really great job. I really liked the family aspect of the book and I loved the friendships. Layla and Mac were so caring and loving to Sydney and Sydney back to them. I also really liked the romance in the book. I pretty much loved every single character except for Ames. He was just a dickhead so we're not going to talk about him. The one downfall that I do have about the book was the ending. I think that it was very rushed and I wanted more from the characters like maybe an epilogue to just see where they were later on because it kind of just abruptly ended but I definitely think that this is the best Sarah Dustin book that I've read so far so I definitely recommend it. The next book that I have is The Outcast by Terrain Mathru and I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. I have a full review of it up so I'm not going to go into detail of it but I really liked it. It's the prequel to the Summoner trilogy so is a good one. The next book that I read was Bad Romance by Heather Demetrios and I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. It follows Grace who wants to escape her abusive household and then she meets a boy named Gavin who promises to take her away. Everything is going perfectly and Grace falls very quickly for Gavin and as their relationship grows Gavin turns into the angry aggressive, jealous boyfriend. So now Grace needs to escape this relationship in order to become herself once again. I think that the book was very hard to read, it was very emotional, but I think that the message was so well done. I really liked how it was written in like a letter format to the abuser. I thought that was really cool. And also when you read the author's note, it states that it's from an experience that she had in her relationship so I think that it's coming from a very personal place. I definitely recommend it. I think that it was very well done. It is very hard to get into but it's such a beautiful story. The next book I have is my favorite book of this month. Obviously once you see it you'll understand why but it is Siren by Sophia Lane Hansen. This is the last book in the vinyl trilogy which is my all-time favorite trilogy. I push this trilogy like crazy on my channel. It is so underrated, so good. I'm not gonna give a synopsis because you know, it's the last book in a trilogy. Y'all need to read it. Five out of five stars. Like, go to Amazon and buy it right now. I'm obsessed with it. The next book I have is Our Dark Duet by Victoria Schwab, and this is the second book in the Songs of Verity duology. I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. I really, really liked it. I don't want to give a synopsis since it is the second book. It takes place six months after the first book. I loved following Kate and August through their story again. I love Kate. She's such a badass. I definitely like August more in The Savage Song. He's kind of annoying in this book because he's trying to be this soldier that he's not. I just wanted him to go back to his self-awareness. But you know, we all can't have what we want. I also actually really liked the romance in this book. I know that I said that a huge factor of why I liked the first book so much was because there was no romance but it was so minimal in this book that it didn't take away from the other parts of the story which I really appreciated. I think that Victoria Schwab has such a way with words and her world building is just so well done. It actually feels like you're part of the story throughout the entire time you're reading it. I also just want to say that Ilsa is such an underrated character and she deserved so much better. That's all I'm gonna say about this book now, okay? 
okay, read this duology, which you probably have because everybody's read it. The next book I have is called Screams You Hear by James Morris, and this was such a surprise to me. I did not expect to like it as much as I did. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows 16-year-old Ruthie, who is living on Hemlock Island, which is a very, very remote island off of the mainland, and her whole world turns upside down when her mother divorces her father and she starts seeing another man. Then one day she washes up on shore, severely burned, the only survivor of a very catastrophic event that happened on the island. So she's in the hospital trying to tell her story and the detective is trying to figure out what actually happened that day. So like I said, I did not expect to like this book as much as I did. The author reached out to me and asked if I wanted to read it and it sounded intriguing so I was like, yeah, sure. Sounds like a plan, my friend. And it was so addictive. I could not put this book down. And when I had to put it down, I was constantly thinking about it and wanting to pick it back up. It's so action-packed and so many twists and turns that I did not see coming. The story is told both in the past during the event that occurred on the island and also the present where Ruthie is telling the detective about what happened. I think that this book is definitely underrated and you guys should all check it out. I also think that it would be an amazing movie. It's just so so good. The next two books that I have are both graphic novels and the first one is All Summer Long by Hope Larson and this follows 13 year old Bina whose best friend Austin goes off to soccer camp during the summer and that's when she starts hanging out with Austin's older sister Charlie. When Austin returns from summer camp he's acting a little bit strangely. It's kind of the coming of age story of their friendship and what it means to grow up and yada yada but I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. It was cute. It was a very quick read. I liked watching Bina grow into herself and realizing that she can do things by herself and she doesn't need to rely on other people. She was kind of annoying at times and constantly was whining about everything in her life but it is important to remember that she is only 13 so it's understandable for that age but it got on my nerves super quickly. I did like the overall message where girls and boys can be friends without having any romantic connection whatsoever. That was a good message but yeah overall it was quick, it was fun but nothing super special in my opinion. The next graphic novel I read was Be Prepared and this is by Vera Broskull and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 as well. It follows Vera who just wants to be like every other kid in her neighborhood and go to summer camp during the summer. So when her mother tells her that she's going to get to attend Aura, which is a Russian summer camp for girls just like her. She's very excited and she thinks that she's going to have a fabulous time and then when she arrives she realizes that that's probably not the case. The older girls are very mean to her and she is very homesick and it's kind of the story of her dealing with that. I really liked watching Vera's character development throughout the story and her trying to find friends and learn more about herself as the story progressed. I think this will be a great book for younger readers who are trying to find their own way into their own friend groups and I also really liked how the book was based off of the author's own experiences and I really liked how she incorporated letters that she wrote to her own mother into the book. I thought that was really cool. The final book that I'm going to talk about in this wrap-up is Say Her Name by Juno Dawson. I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Bobby and her friend Naya who attended this very prestigious boarding school. On Halloween night a couple of people dare her to summon the ghost of Bloody Mary by saying her name into a mirror five times. Bobby, Naya, and a boy named Kane decide that they are going to take on this dare because they've never really believed in ghosts. So after they perform the summoning, strange things start to happen and they start to believe that maybe the rumors about Bloody Mary are actually true. The book was very predictable. I found it pretty boring throughout the entire thing. I wasn't really invested in the story until around a hundred pages left of it when things started to pick up. I did really like the ending of the story though. I think it was a great way to make the reader want more. I did really like the characters and I liked their dialogue. It didn't feel forced like a lot of books with teenagers do. It felt very natural. There were some times where I actually found myself giggling at the book which was surprising because it's supposed to be a horror book. I also really liked the friendship between Naya and Bobby. I love when girls are actually friends and supportive of each other. I think that the romance in the book was very unnecessary and it could have been left out completely and I probably would have enjoyed the book a lot more but overall it was a very fast read but 
nothing special. Alright guys, so that was the first nine books that I read for the month of May this year. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these and what you thought of them, and I will see you in part two of this wrap-up. Goodbye!